What's going on, guys? Austin here. And in this video, we are going to be taking a look at a prediction for the NFL's season awards. So what I've got is the uh, player awards, the, the coach of the year awards. And we're going to start with what I think it might be the least entertaining award every single year. But we've got the NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year. And I've got Jermaine Johnson, the 26th overall pick to the New York Football Jets. Uh, his odds are uh, plus... 1600 not great uh, as you can see there's a couple guys on the list that have uh, better odds um, on my up next Kayvon Thibodeau Aiden Hutchinson uh, Ahmad Sauce Gardner and Kyle Hamilton all have better odds and then Jordan Davis the defensive tackle that went to the Eagles uh, has even odds with Jermaine but what I think gives Jermaine the edge is that he's paired with a defensive tackle Quinn Williams who other than Aaron Donald, Quinn and Williams takes more double slash triple teams, more um, extra help protecting him than any other player on the defensive line in the NFL. Quinn and Williams, the defensive tackle of the Jets, the second most double teamed player in the NFL. Past that, Jermaine Johnson is a guy who he can play middle linebacker. He can play edge linebacker. He can play strong safety. He can really play anywhere you need to in that front seven position. You wouldn't want him to play uh, out way back in the secondary, but he's fast enough. He's got the strength and speed. He's honestly just like a bigger version of Micah Parsons. He's got all the ability to rack up sacks, tackles, picks, force fumbles, anything like that. There's a little bit of TJ Watt in him, a little bit of Micah Parsons. And so what I think happens here is, you know, we're going to, we're going to start seeing a run of, of guys who have this, uh, you know, amazing defensive versatility. I think that is going to be something that, you know, the, the voters start valuing. I like Kayvon Thibodeau. I don't think, uh, I don't think he's going to be able to generate enough sacks alone on that Giants defensive line. Same thing with Aiden Hutchinson. Jordan Davis is an interesting pick, but defensive tackles aren't really a stat position. They're just more of a their position. Sauce Gardner, it could be an excellent cornerback one, but the problem is, is that when you have an excellent cornerback one and a bad cornerback two, what most people end up doing is just not throwing to the cornerback one. Uh, and so he's not going to have a lot of PBUs. He's not going to have a lot of pass breakups. And chances are the only time he's going to get thrown on is when the wide receiver is really open. So he might not look like a good cornerback his first year just because of how bad the rest of the Jets' uh, full secondary is. But don't let th that deceive you. He's still a great player, especially coming in as the – I think he was the fifth overall pick, maybe. I don't remember. Maybe sixth. Uh, no, it was five. And then we have Kyle Hamilton, the safety on the – the rookie safety for the – Baltimore Ravens, who I just think that's too stacked of a, of a secondary. I don't think anybody in that secondary is great, but I think everybody is above average. And so he's not really going to be able to make a name for himself unless he just becomes one of the hardest hitting Sean Taylor type players, where if he starts coming out with these big plays of just popping guys and forcing fumbles like that, then maybe there's a chance that he could skyrocket up this list. But right now, Jermaine Johnson should be the favorite to win defensive rookie of the year. Offensive Rookie of the Year, I have Chris Olave, the wide receiver drafted by the New Orleans Saints. I believe he was drafted 13th overall, maybe 12th overall, something like that. Um, he is going to be a popular target of Jameis because he is the fastest and most deep ball receiver on this team, more than Michael Thomas, more than Jarvis Landry, about the same as Marquez Callaway. He's just better. Right. And so for that reason, he matches up well with the quarterback that they have in New Orleans. He's going to be the healthiest, best opportunity wide receiver on any team in the NFL, because, you know, you have you have guys like um, the rookie that went to the Drake London that went to the Falcons and Jamison Williams that went to the Lions. They're not healthy. They might be better, but they're not healthy. You have the other first round wide receiver. Uh, from Ohio State that went to the Jets, but he's in a, a much more, I'd say, averagely crowded room. I don't think he's as good as Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, but he's got Corey Davis and Elijah Moore in there without a real matchup the way that Chris Olave's game fits with Jameis Winston's. Then you have second and late other round picks 
like Christian Watson and Romeo Dubs to the Packers. You have Jahan Dotson, who was a first round pick that went to the Commanders. But still, again, there's not really that that amazing presence there that you feel like he's just going to get fed the ball because they have Antonio Gibson. Um, Sky Moore to the Chiefs, David Bell. I really wanted to put Traylon Burks up higher. There's a chance that he could end up having an amazing season, you know, with the amount of time that it's going to take Robert Woods to come back fully from the injury. Traylon Burks could end up being that perfect A.J. Brown fill-in. But Chris Olave at, you know, plus 1,100, I think he's going to win the rookie of the year. After him, I really like Kenneth Walker in Seattle because I think he's, he's better than Rashad Penny. That's not a question. The question is, is he going to get the volume carries behind a good enough offensive line to have the full set of yards the way that, you know, when Kareem Hunt was a rookie, he led the league in rushing, somehow didn't win offensive rookie of the year. That was a travesty. He didn't win it. Uh, and the year before that, uh, 2016, Zeke led the league in rushing. Like, you know, there was, there was a stretch where, like, first year rookie running backs were just dominating the league. And I think Kenneth Walker can do that. The offensive line has to be just good enough. Traylon Burks, we already talked about him. Sky Moore, he is a good but not necessarily great wide receiver, but he's going to the Chiefs, and he's fast. So there's a chance that he could become the new Tyree Kill. Not as good as Tyree Kill, at least not yet, but the volume of deep shots that he could see might end up you know, skyrocketing him up this list. I have Isaiah Likely over Kenny Pickett for one reason, and that's I think that Kenny Pickett isn't going to start – most games this season. I think it's going to be about half and half, if not maybe just a little bit in favor of Kenny Pickett, but Isaiah likely the tight end that went from, I think it was coastal Carolina to the Baltimore Ravens. He went to Baltimore, a place where, you know, you've got Lamar Jackson uh, who is not a great deep ball thrower, but he's a very good middle of the field thrower. He's going to be on the field a lot because the offensive line isn't fantastic but they run a heavy power system where they've got tight ends and running backs on the field a lot, and maybe one ride receiver on each side. So you can have Mark Andrews on one side, Isaiah likely on the other side, and you'd have Rashad Bateman as the, as the wide receiver one, and then maybe a slot receiver on the other side with a running back in the back. That's, that's the system. It's likely going to be, they're going to run two tight end set and Isaiah likely could end up seeing a lot of targets and get a lot of red zone targets as well, because this Baltimore Ravens offense is going to be fantastic behind my, potential MVP, Lamar Jackson, and then Kenny Pickett, who he's just poised to be the quarterback that starts the most games out of any of these rookie quarterbacks. I'm not a fan of his. Uh, I think he's got a lot of weapons to play with. He's got Najee Harris that he can throw to. He's got um, Chase Claypool. He's got Deontay Johnson. And now he has George Pickens, the kid from Georgia that everybody's talking about could be amazing. So if he plays, you know, you know, three quarters, half the season and has decent stats. And there's a chance that the voters can just quarterback his way into giving him that award because, you know, some, some awards just seem to be quarterback awards like the Heisman and the MVP, but that's whatever. Next, I've got the coach of the year and I believe it's going to be Nick Sirianni. If you saw one of my previous videos, you saw that I have the Eagles winning the NFC East, but not just winning the NFC East, they're coming in with 12 wins. I think the Eagles are going to be one of the most improved teams from year over year. Even though they made the playoffs last year, they were the seventh seed. This year I have them winning the NFC East, which isn't fantastic. But to me, to win coach of the year, you have to do something that either you didn't didn't expect to have happen on that team or you have to overcome. So last year, I don't remember who ended up winning the award. But I said Mike Vrabel was the coach of the year because he lost so many starters over the course of the season. He had the most lineups, the most starting lineups for the offensive line, for the you know just total starters ever played in any NFL season on his team last year. He lost his best player in Derrick Henry, and he still managed to win the AFC South. So Nick Sirianni at plus 2,000, I think, is going to have a market improvement. And most people don't like Jalen Hurts and the Eagles. I love this team. I think they are going to go old smash mouth football just the way that the Ravens are going to do it. And they're going to win a lot of games. And he is going to be a leading candidate for coach of the year. He's my pick uh, on a projection basis right here. Then I've got Brandon Staley, who I think is going to you know, take the Chargers to the playoffs for the first time in a while. I don't have them winning the AFC West, but I have them tying the Chiefs and just losing a divisional record tiebreak. 
Dan Campbell, he could he could be a candidate for the largest wins increase. Last year, I think the Lions won three games. This year, don't be surprised if they win six, seven, eight, even potentially nine games this year behind that amazing offensive line and that vast array of weapons. Dennis Allen on the Saints, another very similar situation to Nick Sirianni. The only difference is, is that the Saints have been a dynasty the last several years and they had one down year. I think they're coming back to that dynasty. So he's not going to get as many coach of the year award votes unless, you know, the defense just ends up being the best defense in the league. And obviously it'd be because of him. Kevin Stefanski, if he can't have a winning record in the first 11 games without Deshaun Watson, and then just go on a tear to close out the season with Deshaun, look for him to be in that discussion. It'd basically be like last year's Titans, but in reverse, you know, you're just trying to hang on until your best player gets there. Whereas the Titans were, you got there and then you were just trying to hang on without your best player. Then we've got Doug Peterson, who I don't see it, but there's a chance that the Jaguars, everything just clicks. I mean, Christian Kirk could go off. Marvin Jones is an excellent number two. Uh, you know, I really love Travis Etienne. You know, the, the Eagle, or not the Eagles, but the uh, <laughs> Eagles, the, uh, the Jags could just take off with Travis Etienne and Trevor Lawrence and those, you know, two wide receivers. And the defense, you know, with the addition of, um, I can't even remember the first overall pick. I can't remember his name. Um, but with the, you know, with the addition of that, you know, that monster at defensive end and Devin Lloyd at linebacker, they could just end up being, you know, you know, go from whatever they were one, two wins, you know, they could jump up to seven, eight wins, you know, surprise everybody that would shock me. But nonetheless, Doug Peterson has to be on the list somewhere just because whenever you take over the worst team in the NFL, there's a chance. My comeback player of the year, I've got Christian McCaffrey. For one reason and one reason only, it's that Christian McCaffrey is easily the best offensive player, not quarterback, the best offensive weapon in the NFL when he plays. He's better than George Kittle. He's better than Travis Kelsey. He's better than DeFonte Adams. He's better than Jonathan Taylor. He's better than Derrick Henry. When Christian McCaffrey is on the field, he is a top five runner of the football and he is the best receiving back in the history of the NFL. He's on pace with guys like Odell and Justin Jefferson and, and Jarvis Landry for how many receptions a player has had in their first five years. He's on, he's on that list with, with possession wide receivers as a running back. It's unbelievable how effective he is. And you combine that with the fact that he didn't have you know, a degenerative knee issue like Todd Gurley did. He didn't, he didn't get old and go to a bad team like Le'Veon Bell did. He didn't have, you know, a nasty injury like David Johnson did. He just had these small soft tissue muscle, you know, muscle, muscle bruises basically on his hamstring and on his quad over the last two years. And he's missed a lot of games. And last year he, you know, he played, you know, a couple games in the middle of the season. And then he just ended the season on IR basically saying, yeah, like there's no reason for me playing. We suck. So the law of averages would state that he's not going to get hurt and miss half the season. Again, it's just, it's just not likely to happen. And so Christian McCaffrey on a per game basis is one of the 10 best players in the NFL and the best offensive weapon in the NFL. He's going to have a large volume when he plays because there's nobody else that's good on that team um, with, you know, the possible exception of DJ Moore, who's a decent wide receiver. Derrick Henry coming in at number two. Uh, he is the favorite to win the award. You'll see Christian McCaffrey's plus 700. Derrick Henry's plus 500. Uh, Jameis Winston's right behind him at plus 600. But Derrick Henry, uh, you know, he just, he just gets the volume. He's a monster. He's a little older. I believe he's 28 years old. Um, and coming off of an injury at the age of 28 as a running back is going to be difficult. But if there's any body in the NFL that would ever do it, it's going to be the body of the king, Derrick Henry. Jameis Winston was having an elite season last year. He had 14 touchdowns, three picks before he went down after four or five, five weeks. Um, I've got Marcus Mariota. I believe there's just a chance that he could end up 
you know, bringing the Falcons to, you know, five, six wins, that would shock everybody because he's been, you know, backing up Derek Carr for so many years. Uh, I believe it's been three years, actually. Um, and it's been such a long time since we've seen him play, but I, I believe in his ability, especially his ability to throw to tight ends and running backs, which the Falcons might have the best receiving tight end in the bat and the best receiving running back. Uh, in the NFL, you know, with a po couple possible exceptions, like, you know, maybe a Travis Kelsey and a Christian McCaffrey. Uh, Travis Etienne, uh, I talked about him. Jeez, I hope I spelled that right. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't spell check that. Um, but Travis Etienne, um, he was my favorite running back coming out of the draft last year. Now, obviously, Najee Harris has made me look silly so far, but there's a chance that Travis Etienne gets that, gets that dog, back and brings you know a ton of yards catches touchdowns back to Jacksonville and then Jared Goff I like Jared Goff in this spot because he's got arguably a top five offensive line in the NFL arguably a top five running back room in the NFL and arguably at worst top half wide receiver slash tight end room in the NFL the offense should be good Jared Goff, don't be surprised if he has, you know, 4,200 yards, 35 touchdowns, uh, you know, with, you know, say like 12 picks, which is a crazy, it's a crazy good season for a guy who people just cast it off. And so I've got Jared Goff uh, as the, as my personal fifth favorite to win that award. Obviously, if you're betting, there's a lot of guys in between Christian McCaffrey and Jared Goff plus 10,000, but I think he's poised for an elite breakout year from a comeback perspective. My defensive player of the year should be obvious. The reigning three-time defensive player of the year with one trophy on his shelf, TJ Watt. TJ Watt is the most productive defensive player uh, in the NFL over the last four years, five years um, since he was drafted. I believe he was drafted in 2017. Uh, I mean, there's just nothing he doesn't do from the pass rushing perspective. He gets sacks, he gets forced fumbles, he gets quarterback hits, he gets tackles for loss, everything. There's no reason why he shouldn't have two defensive player of the year trophies, let alone possibly three. So he should be the favorite for another one this year. Micah Parsons, uh, I talked about him a little bit earlier when I spoke about Jermaine Johnson, but basically it's just everything that he did last year, he can just take a slightly slightly step up in the uh, Dan Quinn system. Uh, I believe if there's anybody that's going to overtake TJ Watt, it would be him. Uh, after that, Miles Garrett, who is the betting favorite to win defensive player of the year. Miles Garrett, who is arguably the best pure pass rusher in the NFL. He's probably the strongest player uh, from that defensive end position. And, you know, if he can play a full season without, you know, committing a crime and getting suspended, there's a solid chance that he leads the league in sacks. Now, he hasn't done it yet. A lot of it's been Chandler Jones and TJ Watt. Um, Nick Bosa has been above him before, but I believe Miles Garrett, when he first leads the league in sacks, will be the year that the voters finally just give him sympathy votes to win the Defensive Player of the Year because people have been talking about him winning it, even though he's never deserved it. Ignore that. After that, I've got Nick Bosa uh, at plus, you know, plus 1,000. Um, in my opinion, he is neck and neck with Miles Garrett for the best defensive end in the NFL. On San Francisco, he's been so underrated and so productive. Um, they basically play the same style. It's just Nick Bosa is just a slight, slight dip in athleticism in comparison. Then Derwin James at plus 4,000. I don't know why he's not hired. Derwin James is arguably the best safety in the league, arguably the best defensive back in the league. The pass rush got better. The and the cornerbacks got better. So that just leaves him at free safety open for more tackles uh, on good plays, more hits, and especially more interceptions and forced fumbles. And then I've got Jalen Ramsey because I think that, I think that J one of Jalen's biggest, uh, I would say downfalls as far as defensive player of the year voting award has gone is that he doesn't necessarily get a lot of picks. He never really gets thrown to a lot. Now we saw a slight dip. People want to talk about how he got cooked in the Super Bowl. He didn't. He gave up two catches 
and one of them was a clear offensive pass interference. So, I mean, I don't, I don't even want to talk about, oh, he's, he's dipping, he's dipping. But what I think is going to happen is in his career, he has been a one-on-one travel with the best cornerback his entire career. I'm going to follow you and don't give me help behind the back. What I think is going to change is there's going to be a slight shift in his career where he's going to start getting just a little bit of help over the back. And what I think that's going to do is cause a lot worse balls to get thrown his way in comparison because quarterbacks don't have to worry about the safety over the top. Now, if they do, they're going to be throwing those really short. And Jalen Ramsey is one of the best mid-air adjustment receiver or mid-air adjustment defensive backs. And he's going to be getting a lot of picks. I expect six, seven, maybe even eight interceptions from him this year. And then for the league MVP, this one was close. I wanted to put Lamar Jackson there, but I think that the Bills, although Lamar is going to lead the league uh, or lead the AFC and wins, I think Josh Allen is going to have the the narrative vote. Uh, People stylistically like Josh Allen more than they like Lamar Jackson, Um, but the Bills are going to have an elite team just the same as Lamar Jackson. The Bills are going to have a better defense than the Ravens do. Uh, The Bills have better wide receivers than the Ravens do. The Ravens have... It's maybe slightly better running backs and clearly a better tight end. Um, offensive lines are about comparable. Ravens are probably a little bit better. But the difference is just it's really just going to be in the style points uh, between these two quarterbacks. I have them neck and neck. I, I want to put money on Lamar Jackson, but it's just I, I don't know if I have the confidence uh, to do it this early in the season. Because, I mean, just look at the odds. Josh Allen's plus 700. So you, if you bet hundred dollars, you're going to win back 700. If you put a hundred dollars on Lamar Jackson, you're going to win back 2000. That's a huge difference. Uh, but after that, I've got Justin Herbert who, you know, if he leads his team to the AFC West title, I have them tying with the chiefs and going to the fifth seed. But if he went, takes him to an AFC West title, which would probably mean the second or the third seed, there's a strong chance that he wins that MVP award, despite the fact that he's been amazing quarterback. It, it just seems to be a quarterback wins record. Christian McCaffrey at plus 15,000. Now, the reason I have him on here above two of the best quarterbacks in the league is that if the Panthers shock the world and go on a tear and win, say, nine, 10 games and make the playoffs, you know, as they say, the seven seed, it will be simply because Christian McCaffrey goes God mode. There's nobody on that team, but what we've seen from Christian McCaffrey in the past is that when he's healthy, the Panthers cannot be stopped with him, with him touching the football. And so with Akeem Aquanu now on that team, they have a slightly improved offensive line. I think Baker's a downgrade at quarterback, but that's neither here nor there. Christian McCaffrey is going to be the most heavily utilized running back like he always is on a per game basis. And if he can finish the season and get them to 10 wins, I like that money right there. Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes, basically they're on here for the same reason is that they're both amazing quarterbacks that lost their number one wide receiver and got back the receiver depth instead of a number one receiver. And so If either of these quarterbacks just, you know, continue on the same stat trajectory that they were on before and have amazing seasons, then there's a good chance that if, you know, they win their conferences, you know, number one seed, they could win that award. I've got Lamar and Josh ahead of them for those same reasons. Justin, um, Justin up there for basically the same reason that McCaffrey's on there, if they can carry their team to the playoffs, although I don't think Justin would really be carrying his team his team drastically improved Uh, and then Rodgers and Mahomes for the exact same reason. So there you have it. Josh Allen, the best individual odds out of all these awards at plus 700 TJ Watt plus 800 Christian McCaffrey plus 700 Nick Sirianni plus 2000 Chris Olave plus 1100 and Jermaine Johnson at plus 1600. So let me know how you think your team is going to do. Be sure to uh, comment, make sure to like and subscribe and let me know what you think about your team's future in the comments down below.